Hi everyone, this is a demonstration of the webinar browser interface that we use here at California Civil PE Review. Uh, the process starts with you as, in, as students receiving an email that looks like the one here. You'll notice that we have a session shown, we have a time and date that is going to start, but the piece that you really care about is down here at the bottom. This link is good only for one uh, webinar session, so you're going to need a separate uh, email for each session that you plan on attending. What you do is you go ahead and click on that one, so I'm going to go ahead and do that by opening it up in a new tab, and what you'll see is this welcome uh, up here. I'm using the name as a student of John Doe, so you'll see that up here. And what you want to do is come over here to the join meeting piece and click on that. What this does is it throws a brand new uh, uh, browser window, so I'm going to minimize the first one. And here I am with the other one. I'm going to enable my Flash plugin. Some of you it comes in uh, automatically. It depends on your system. And then I stretch out my interface to kind of take up all of my desktop so that I can have the most screen real estate. Uh, this, this thing is now uh, connecting up to the uh, webinar service and you're presented first with a, a static image. This thing is called the lobby. This is where you hang out until the instructor starts the session. So let me go do that on another computer as instructor. I'm going to start the meeting up. And I'm now thrown into the usual interface. This is where all of the uh, business is going to take place. And you'll notice that we have a few different areas inside this interface. The first area on the left is a webcam of your instructor, and you'll see it's getting a nice side shot of me. Um, and then down below is a listing of files, in this case just one file, that you can actually download to your desktop. This is uh, the same as what you see over here in the content window. Also you have down here is a chat. And so uh, uh, the chat area is between uh, uh, everyone involved in the um, meeting. So students, all of them can, can present in here, as can the instructor. This is the primary way that students and instructors uh, uh, communicate with each other. There is one other way, and I'll show you that in a moment. The very first thing you want to do is come up to Settings and go to Connection Settings. This brings up a dialog down here and you'll notice that you have different alternative uh, bandwidths uh, that you can choose from. The low quality means that you have a rather slow internet connection, uh, medium is a moderate, and high quality means that you have a, a pretty wide band. So I know that I have a high quality or, or high bandwidth connection, so I'm going to go ahead and select that one, and then be sure to hit save so that it keeps it. The other thing I want to do is if I am interested in using my microphone as a student, student wants to use the microphone, uh, and that's in addition to chat down here, then I have to go back up to settings and this time hit on microphone settings. And I'm going to be presented with this dialog box. The first thing is asking me, do I want the flash plugin to be enabled? The answer is yes and I just hit allow on this little tiny box here. Once I've done that I can go to a pull down here that allows me to select the microphone that I wish to use. Most systems have one uh, a microphone built into it but if you've plugged in a separate one you can select it from here. Um, so you can pick one there and then down here you can select the gain control. This is how sensitive the system is to sounds coming into the microphone. You can also select automatic if you wish. The system will select it by on its own. And then the echo, you can select that or not. I'm going to close that off. So now I can speak to the instructor, but the instructor has to enable my audio signal to come into the presentation. So I need to let him know through the chat down here that I'd like my microphone enabled so that I can speak using voice, not just chat. The other thing you may want to do is after you've seen that I'm alive and everything's okay is go up here to this suspend this video and click on that. And what it does is it freezes the video so that it doesn't keep sending the video signal down into your browser thereby sucking up valuable bandwidth. You can click on it and it will re-enable at any time and you'll notice it'll jerk here in just a moment. There it goes. And so as the connection catches up, there it goes. So now we're back in 
in real time. I'm going to disable this right now just so it's not distracting, so I'll click that to suspend it. Uh, at any time during the presentation, you can download the files that are listed over here, and there's only one listed here tonight just for demo purposes, and what you do is click on the little arrow and it gives you a two options to download or to open it. I would recommend you do the download. If you click that, it will bring up a uh, uh, it will launch a, a browser window that will allow you to download that particular file. You simply click allow and it will start to come down. It looks like this. As it populates, you can then go up here and click on that button, which will allow you to save the file to anywhere that you navigate to. So I'm going to get out of that since we don't really care about that. And back to our interface. Um, if you are going to use your microphone after you've set up the microphone settings over here, the other thing you have to do is click on the microphone icon such that it does not have the red line through it. Now your microphone's enabled provided your instructor enables it to enter into the presentation. The default setting is mute. So you have to let your instructor know that you want to use audio. Now, you have a couple ways to do it. I mentioned the chat down here. and the chat, you go down to this particular line and type in uh, uh, something and then click send. And that will wind up over here as it shows here, hello there. The other way to get a hold of your instructor is to use this flyout menu, give feedback flies out and pick any of these things question or disagree or go fast slow down coffee break whatever pick one of these and this icon will appear next to your name in your instructor's uh, uh, interface so that he knows that John Doe the student wants some attention and that way the instructor knows to pause and to come back to the chat or whatever to find out what's what's needed um, the other thing we can talk about is this presentation window up here. There's two things that you're going to see. The first one is content, as you'll notice up here. You'll notice that um, there you have the ability to use some tools. Your instructor has quite a bit of drawing tools, and so I'm going to enable some. And you'll notice that I can, as instructor, draw. Is what the instructor's doing. But you, as a student, have the ability to not only draw, as you'll see over here, you have your own palette, but you can also use a pointer. And so you'll see that John Doe, the student, is able to point around. Uh, and this might be an aid to when you're trying to explain something, use your microphone, or trying to explain something when you use chat. So it's a nice thing to have. Now, I mentioned that over here, you can download a clean copy of the presentation, but suppose you also want the markup from your instructor, what you would use is the PDF button right there. So let me grab that. You click the PDF button, it will save not only what's in the content window, but also any markup by you and your instructor will be kept as well. So you have choices on what you want to do in terms of saving this stuff off. The notes are written such that you can take notes and superimpose them. Uh, we call them margin notes, meaning that, that you're, you're, it's intended that you write them in the margins. So because this is an online course, what you may want to do is have a piece of paper next to you and jot down things that you'd like to and then add them onto your notes later or simply reference them to your notes. That way you have sort of customized notes, uh, personalized notes for yourself. And that's about it. When, when we get to a point where we need uh, uh, to take a break, uh, we will suspend this thing and you'll be left back out into the um, lobby. So let me do that. Let's suppose that we are going to take a break right now. So your instructor is doing that on another machine. And out you go. And it lets you know that the meeting's been interrupted and you're back out to the lobby. And then when the break is over, your instructor will once again restart the meeting and you are miraculously shown back in. Uh, just the same as you left it. Um, your notes uh, are typewritten, as you can tell. These are composed up until pretty much the last minute when, when we need to present them. So that's why we distribute them in lecture as opposed to ahead of time. So uh, that's how that, that works. If you have a problem, if this just is not working for you, you want to send an email to instructor at civilpereview.com. Uh, 
that is uh, the interface that we started with over here and I will be monitoring this from time to time to see if anybody is really having problems and they just can't figure out how to get everything going but we have very few problems with this most people find this to be very simple uh, very easy to do so that's it thank you for your uh, attention and I'll see you in class